Hello dear students, welcome to the lecture 14 of Artificial Intelligence and Machine Learning. Uh, so today, uh, the first part is about logistic regression. Uh, I won't get into details of mathematical aspect of uh, regression. So uh, I have found four good videos for you to learn uh, more information about regression. Uh, so I'm leaving their links here and also there are four other videos related to uh, statistics and uh, linear regression. If you watch all of these uh, videos, you will understand them much better. Uh, it is uh, really not that easy to understand and therefore you may need to watch videos at least twice. Okay, uh, so let's get uh, Touch to regression uh, briefly. From a probability standpoint, what we're really doing when we're training the model is selecting the theta that maximizes. Okay, and... That we pick the most likely model parameters given the data. Okay. So, estimating revisited... We can incorporate a prior belief in what the probabilities might be. To do this, we need to break down our probability. Okay, and what are each of these probabilities? So there are priors, likelihood of the data under the model, probability of the different parameters called prior, probability of seeing the data, okay, regardless of the model. And does P data matter for ArcMax? Okay, and what does uh, MLL, MLAA assume for a prior on the model parameter? So what was this? Maximum likelihood estimation. And assumes a uniform prior, i.e. all theta are equally likely. Okay, and relies solely on the likelihood. Relies solely on the likelihood. Okay. And a better approach would be We can use any distribution weed like this allows us to impart addition bias into the model. Okay, and let's continue. Okay, these are all mathematical uh, points. Anyway, I will just pass this part. Quickly, I leave the videos to you to watch and understand. And okay, so this is the part that we might need to understand. Logistic regression. How would we classify examples once we had a trained model? If the sum greater than 0 then p, 1, p, 0, greater than 1, so positive. If the sum less than 0 then p, 1, p, 0, less than 1, so negative. Still a linear classifier, decision boundary is a line. Okay, so you see, uh, there are some probabilities and we get log of them. So if the log, if the sum of this is bigger than one, we, we can call it as positive. If uh, smaller than one, we can call it as negative, but still a linear classifier. And how should we learn the parameters for logistic regression, i.e. the W's? W's are the weights of the parameters, if you remember. And then find the parameters that maximize the likelihood or log likelihood of the data. Okay, and I will just pass these parts. Okay, so there is linear classifier here. There is conditional model logistic here and linear model minimizing logistic loss. And then uh, to prevent overfitting, we also do regularization. Uh, you see L2 regularization, I have shown you this. And 
Okay, there are L1 and L2 regularizations. And okay, let's read this one too. A digression, regression versus classification. Okay, classification, discrete some finite set of levels, regression, real value. So the difference between the classification and regression is at the classification, uh, the values are finite, discrete. Okay, uh, like in uh, integer values or uh, in regression, we use real values, a uh, continuous values, such as you are getting input of stream of data, like a voice data. It is a stream uh, data, for example, or uh, let's say, for example, uh, car prices versus something else. Car prices, uh, maybe uh, maybe real values. I don't know. It is it it changes according to your uh, data type. So. Okay, let's find a good explanatory thing. Okay, here are the differences. Let's re repeat them. Regression algorithm. Classification algorithm. In regression, the output variable must be of continuous nature or real value. In classification, the output variable must be a discrete value. The task of the regression algorithm is to map the input value x with the continuous output variable y. The task of the classification algorithm is to map the input value x with the discrete output variable y. Regression algorithms are used with continuous data. Classification algorithms are used with discrete data. In regression, we try to find the best fit line, which can predict the output more accurately. In classification, we try to find the decision boundary, which can divide the data set into different classes. Regression algorithms can be used to solve the regression problems such as weather prediction, house price prediction, etc. Okay, so Yusuf, for weather prediction or house price prediction, we use regression because they are real valued data and for classification we know them. Classification algorithms can be used to solve classification problems such as identification of spam emails, speech recognition, identification of cancer cells, etc. The regression algorithm can be further divided into linear and nonlinear regression. The classification algorithms can be divided into binary classifier and multi-class classifier. Okay, regression versus classification, and I will find a example for you. Okay, here you see uh, at the classification, you see there are two uh, different classes, and at the regression, for each input uh, values, we generate an output point here with this line as you can see this is a linear line and there can be also a non-linear line and uh, let's look at this one or look at this one okay Okay, for example, for regression, temperature for tomorrow. How do we define predictive temperature? We may get a lot of real value um, input, such as uh, the wind speed and the humidity of the air and etc. Real value values. Then we predict a value, not a class. For classification, for example, we can classify the uh, cancer type among multiple cancer types, or we can predict as whether it cancer or not cancer and such. I think you are getting the idea. So let's continue. 
Linear regression. Given some points, find the line that best fits, explains the data our model is a line, i.e. we're assuming a linear relationship between the feature and the label value. Okay, so for each input, we predict an output on this line. Okay, so we are trying to get a line that will uh, model our training data. Training data are these gray points, and our model is being this F1 function which is this line okay so how can we find this line learn a line h that minimizes some loss error function and then there are some of the individual errors and error minimization how do we find the minimum of an equation Take the derivative, set to zero and solve, going to be a min or a max. Okay, so then we can use square error, uh, function line, okay, multi-line logistic function, logistic regression, like here, you see. Okay, so if you watch the videos, you will get more idea, I will just pass it and ensemble learning ensemble learning this is important basic idea if one classifier works well why not use multiple classifiers okay so ensemble learning is about um, merging multiple classifiers and deciding according to the majority vote so this increases the strength of our classification this increases our uh, accuracy performance and uh, so we utilize basically multiple classifiers of course uh, the uh, trade-off of this method is it requires more uh, system resources because we are basically using multiple classifiers okay so we have training data and we have multiple training algorithm and we have different models uh, as a result of using three uh, different learning algorithms then each algorithm each model makes a prediction and then we decide the final prediction how do we do that take majority vote if they output probabilities take a weighted vote how does having multiple classifiers help us okay one moment okay so let's continue and benefits of ensemble learning assume each classifier makes a mistake with some probability e.g. 0.4 that is a 40 percent error rate Assuming the decisions made between classifiers are independent, what will be the probability that we make a mistake, i.e. error rate, with three classifiers for a binary classification problem? Okay, so the uh, error would decrease uh, significantly if they were independent, the models. So if you calculate, uh, you see the probability of each model uh, deciding correctly or incorrectly and if we take majority vote you see in which cases we are making mistakes we are making mistakes here with this probability here here and here so our mistake rate reduces to uh, 35 percent from 40 percent okay so it is a, a significant um, let's say uh, significant improvement of error rate also uh, if we use multiple uh, different algorithms their mistake rates would be not the same probably some of them would be a letter and we may even get much higher uh, error uh, much higher uh, accuracy and lesser error rates three classifiers in general for r equals probability of mistake for individual classifier 
so uh, if the error rate is 0 0.4 it is reduced to 0 0.35 if the error rate is 0 0.3 it is reduced to 0 0.22 if the error rate is 0 0.2 it is reduced to 0 0.1 you see there is a half um, uh, error rate reduction here if the error rate is 0 0.1 it is reduced to almost um, four uh, one four of the error rate so the error uh, so the increase uh, let's say the accuracy increase is much higher when the uh, error rate of the models are lower okay and what if we use five classifiers in th instead of three classifiers. Five classifiers in general for R equals probability of mistake for individual classifier. So you see here this time uh, the uh, reduction of the error rate is even bigger. You see when we combine more classifiers and if we increase it, you will you will get much better result. Of course, it will. Uh, take more resources okay so given enough classifiers you see the uh, error rate decrease we can even decrease it under 10% uh, with uh, just about 40 classifiers using as um, ensemble classification Obtaining independent classifiers. Okay. Where do we get M independent classifiers? Idea 1. Different learning methods. For example, decision tree, KNN, perceptual, new bias, gradient descent, variant 1, gradient descent, variant 2. So these are all different learning algorithms, basically. And what are the pros and cons of this approach? The approach of uh, different learning methods so the pros lots of existing classifiers already can work well for some problems so what are the cons and concerns often classifiers are not independent that is they make the same mistakes e.g many of these classifiers are linear models Voting won't help us if they're making the same mistakes. Okay, so the idea two of ensemble learning. Idea two, split up training data. Use the same learning algorithm, but train on different parts of the training data. Okay, so what are the pros and cons of split up training data? Pros, learning from different data, so can't overfit to same examples easy to implement fast. Okay, and what are the cons? Cons, concerns, each classifier is only training on a small amount of data not clear why this would do any better than training on full data and using good regularization. So, this is not much uh, making a uh, difference splitting up the training data over than the using entire training data. So, the idea three is begging. Okay, here we still uh, split data into the M training data, however, with a different uh, data generation distribution. And with begging, we use training data as a proxy for the data generation distribution and it is uh, working like this. Pick a random example from the real training data. Add it to the new training data. Put it back, i.e. leave it in the original training data. So here we don't remove that picket data from our data pool okay so our data pool remains same and we just pick a data uh, uh, at each time pick another random example okay 
So it is called as sampling with replacements. Okay. Keep going until you've created a new training data set. Create M new training data sets by sampling with replacement from the original training data set called M bootstrap samples. Train a classifier on each of these data sets. To classify, take the majority vote from the M classifiers. So what are the concerns of begging method? Won't these all be basically the same? For a data set of size n, what is the probability that a given example will not be select in a new training set sampled from the original? So it is the prob the probability is 1 minus 1 over n. Okay. And each drug is independent and has the same probability, therefore it also gets um, power n for n times. So converges very quickly uh, to the 63% uh, ratio. And there will be overlap. On average, a randomly sampled data set will only contain 63% of the examples in the original. Okay, this is the this is about a randomness. Uh, it is impossible for us to get a perfect randomness, even if we go to the infinite. We can only get 63% randomness uh, with our mathematical algorithms. Okay, uh, so this is about that. When we pick randomly each element from a set, let's say our set has 100 elements and we pick 100 times random elements from our set and we don't reduce our set. Our set remains same, static, and each time we pick a, an element randomly and on average or le on infinity times, let's say our set is infinity, uh, length, we get only 63% of the uh, our set. Okay, this is uh, about mathematical uh, randomness. Oh, I see. I I have forgotten my microphone, so my voice was not very good. Okay. When does bagging work? Let's say 10% of our examples are noisy, i.e. don't provide good information. For each of the new data set, what proportion of noisy examples will they have? They'll still have approximately 10% of the examples as noisy. However, these examples will only represent about a third of the original noisy examples. Okay. For some classifiers that have trouble with noisy classifiers, this can help. When does bagging work? Bagging tends to reduce the variance of the classifier. By voting, the classifiers are more robust to noisy examples. Bagging is most useful for classifiers that are unstable. Small changes in the training set produce very different models, prone to overfitting. often has similar effect to regularization okay so this is uh, what it says about ensemble learning i think i would say the best approach would be combining different uh, classification algorithms and therefore uh, uh, you would use multiple strong algorithms to take majority vote of them or even you can have weighted majority vote of them such as if you know that uh, classification a works best and classification b works lesser than that you can give more weight to the classification a than classification b so you can also take their weighted majority vote as well uh, so this is about uh, trial and error uh, for your uh, task you have to test uh, multiple uh, combinations of 
classification and methods, approaches, algorithms and try to find the best one that fits to your task and uh, your data. Okay, so one moment, I will take a pause. Okay, so the part three, boosting, okay. Boosting. Ensemble learning. Basic idea, if one classifier works well, why not use multiple classifiers? Okay, we know the basic idea right now, so I will just pa uh, pass them. Idea 4. Idea 4, boosting. So we have training data, data label and weight of the training data. You see, you normally, uh, we give equal weight to all training data examples. Okay, however, what if we change... Uh, feature weight this is about uh, giving weighted uh, data therefore uh, different features would affect our model with different uh, uh, percents okay percentages so strong learner given a reasonable amount of training data a target error rate epsilon a failure probability p a strong learning algorithm will produce a classifier with error rate less than epsilon with probability 1p 1 minus p okay so the weak learners given a reasonable amount of training data a failure probability p a weak learning algorithm will produce a classifier with error rate less than 0.5 with probability 1p. Weak learners are much easier to create. Weak learners for boosting. So what is the difference between weak learner and strong learner? The difference is a target error rate epsilon. Okay. So, weak learning algorithm, weak classifier, which of our algorithms can handle weights? Need a weak learning algorithm that can handle weighted examples. Boosting, basic algorithm. Training, start with equal example weights for some number of iterations, learn a weak classifier and save, change the example weights. Classify, get prediction from all learned weak classifiers, weighted vote based on how well the weak classifier did when it was trained. Okay, so you see, uh, we generate multiple weak classifiers with different example weights. Okay, and then we get their uh, majority vote based on how well they did when they were uh, trained. Okay, when they, when we have composite our models start with equal weighted examples weights a1 a2 a3 and let's see e1 e2 e3 e4 e5 and learn a weak classifier weak one and then what do we do we do something like this uh, some of them classified correct and some of them classified incorrect. We want to reweight the examples and then learn another weak classifier. How should we change the example weights? Okay, this is about how our model at the end classified our examples, our data, our training data. So if that example is trained correctly and if that is uh, trained incorrectly we will change their weights according to them at the first they all had the same weight as you can see here and after uh, classifying correctly and incorrectly we change their weights like this decrease the weight for those were getting correct Increase the weight for those we're getting incorrect. And then we learn another classifier. Learn another weak classifier, week two. 
So this time, you see the correct ones are still correct. However, the incorrect one, example 5, is now correct. Okay, so this is our uh, week 2 classifier. Then, we increase the weight of the uh, incorrect one, E4, and we then decrease the correct ones. Decrease the weight for those we're getting correct. Increase the weight for those we're getting incorrect. And then, with this approach, we will uh, uh, obtain multiple weak classifiers and each of them will have different prediction when we predict an unseen data. Weighted vote based on how well they classify the training data. Weak underscore two underscore vote greater than weak underscore one underscore vote since it got more right. You see the week two classifier correctly classified four out of five and week one classifier correctly classified three out of five. Therefore, the voting uh, power of uh, week two classifier is better. So if you obtain even better ones at the per, uh, further uh, trainings, then their votes will be higher than the week two or week one as well. She example I in the training data. Okay, this is the notation is pretty simple. So this is the basic idea of boosting and then we see a real uh, algorithm. Add a boost, train. For k equals 1 to iterations. So we do a uh, certain number of iterations. Classifier equals learn a weak classifier based on weights. Calculate weighted error for this classifier. Calculate score for this classifier. Change the example weights. Okay. Okay, there is prediction. Did we get the example wrong? Weighted some of the errors, mistakes. And... Between zero, if we get all examples right, and one, if we get them all wrong. Okay. Okay, then this is the range. It ranges from 1 to minus 1. So this is the output range of uh, Adebus classification and error rate 50% equal to 0. Uh, because this is a weak classifier. This is about its algorithm. I will just pass algorithm. If you want to learn it, you, you can check internet. The weighted vote of the learned classifiers weighted by alpha, remember alpha varies from 1 to minus 1 training error. What happens if a classifier has error greater than 50%? Then we actually vote the opposite. We update the weighted examples, okay. Z is called the normalizing constant. It is used to make sure that the weights sum to 1. Okay, this is important. Then we add a uh, normalized constant to make sure weighted sums are equal to 1. Okay, this is about its algorithm. And correct, incorrect. Okay, this is important. Note, only change weights based on current classifier, not all previous classifiers. Okay. If the classifier was good, less than 50% error, alpha is positive, trust classifier output and move as normal. If the classifier was back, greater than 50% error, alpha is negative classifier is so bad, consider opposite prediction of classifier. Okay. Okay, anyway. Adaboost turns out to be another approach for minimizing the exponential loss. So these are the loss mistakes and correct. So this is the other boost loss function and logit boost, brown boost and zero one loss. And these are the mistakes and boosting examples start with equal weighted data set like here. 
and we learn a line like this what should what would be the best line learned of this data set it may be something like this and if the error rate is uh, equal to 0 0.5 then we change the weights uh, according to like this this is a weak classifier it performs slightly better than chance okay so the point of B classifier is it performs slightly better than chance what does this mean this means that if we randomly classify uh, data into the binary classification what is our chance to get it right correctly it is 50 percent because with binary classification it can be either true or false and our chance to correct it to predict it correctly is 50 percent so these fires our uh, performance is slightly better than chance slightly better than 50 percent nothing else okay and with boosting we give less weight or uh, bigger weight to the correct and incorrect ones then we can learn another uh, line according to our boosted weights then we decrease weights and increase the weights again according to that then we learn another line like this you see each time we are learning different models each line is a model if you remember so with combination of multiple models you see f1 model f2 model f3 model and f4 model we are able to almost correctly classify all these examples okay the strong non-linear classifier is built as the combination of all the weak linear classifiers okay for k equals one to iterations classifier equals learn a weak classifier based on weights weighted error for this classifier is score or weight for this classifier is change the example weights okay so let's repeat this because it's important at the beginning we get a line like this our error rate is almost 50 percent you see then based on the er erroneous uh, nodes um, we change our weights okay how do we change it let's say uh, we count the left side incorrect and the right side correct so we increase weights of right side for red and we increase weight of uh, left side for uh, green ones okay and this is being uh, our first model trained on the equal weights then we decrease weights based on the incorrect and correct labels and so it becomes like this and uh, it becomes like this so this is our being another model then we increase, increase and decrease weights based on correctness and it becomes like this and when combining all of them we obtain a strong non-linear classifier based on multiple linear classifiers So which classification algorithm we can use? Anything that can train on weighted examples, for most applications, must be fast. Why? Each iteration we have to train a new classifier. Boosted decision stumps. One of the most common classifiers to use is a decision tree, can use a shallow, 2 to 3 level tree, even more common is a 1 level tree, called a decision stump asks a question about a single feature. What does the decision boundary look like for a decision stump? Okay. Linear classifier. Each stump defines the weight for that dimension. If you learn multiple stumps for that dimension, then it's the weighted average. So you see, let's say we have 10 features for, so for each feature, we can learn a linear classifier, a stump. And if we learn multiple stumps for that dimension, so you, if you remember each feature was being a dimension in our multidimensional space, we can use weighted average of uh, multiple classifiers for that. 
uh, dimension. So boosting in practice. Very successful on a wide range of problems. One of the keys is that boosting tends not to overfit, even for a large number of iterations. You see it doesn't uh, overfit. Using less than 10,000 training examples can fit greater than 2 million parameters. Add a boost application example, face detection. So it can be used even for face detection as well. So there is an article, rapid object detection using a boosted cascade of simple features. You see, there are many uh, algorithms. Weak learners, four types of rectangle filters similar to hard waveless. And it can get the face like this. You see, it is very fast and very powerful. And begging versus boosting, there are algorithms you want to read. Popular ensemble methods and empirical study. Here it is published in 1999. I, think, I am sure there are modern ones as well. And there can be boosting neural networks. Okay, boosting decision trees. And also, there are some. Uh, useful algorithms related to AWS and such you should also watch them uh, because you will understand them much better okay and let's see if we can find a good article easy one related to AWS Actually, none of these algorithms are easy. And developing a such algorithm can uh, earn you a PhD degree. They are very much harder uh, to develop, find, and tune. Uh, basically, here we are getting what are our available options, what can we use when we are solving our uh, machine learning task. So, in this lecture our aim is to give you what options there are what algorithms there are that you can utilize however developing and tuning an algorithm is a tremendous task uh, they are the topic of uh, a phd or master degree and okay this is about it okay there are example okay let's Facial recognition is not hard task anymore. Join this workshop. Okay. Okay, with Ada Boost, we model we learn multiple models and then we get their uh, weighted voting to uh, decide our task. Okay, then you can read this uh, article to, for example, learn how it works. And with Python, it is so easy to uh generate a model with ada boost algorithm okay anyway i think i will finish the lecture here uh, normally we should have only 14 lectures but uh, the last lecture i will split it into two parts so i will also record lecture 15 and it will be the last one okay see you later